blessed Sunday morning to all. This is the 10th Sunday after Pentecost. It is my pleasure to welcome all of you to worship today. Those of you present in the sanctuary, we are so pleased that you are here. May God bless us as we worship together. We also welcome those who are joining us by way of the internet. We welcome all our viewers here in the United States and in other parts of the world. Welcome. This is the Fulton First United Methodist Church. I am Jefferson Niles, the pastor, and our worship leader for today is Mr. Tom Brown. We say a very warm welcome to Mr. Brown and we look forward to his leadership. We also recognize our technicians, Dan Crast, Rich Folds, David Voshbury, they are present. And we acknowledge our brothers, Andrew Gilbert and Joe Abati, who are working behind the scenes. We appreciate all your work and pray that God will continue to bless you. Very special recognition as well to our musician for today, Japheth Niles. And this is a special day for him as he will be participating in the graduation ceremony at the Onondaga Community College, which was postponed from May. So that will take place this afternoon. So we congratulate Japheth and all graduates. Thank you as well to our ushers for the fine job that you are doing in assisting so that we can ensure that everyone that comes remains safe and healthy as we continue this um, process of in-person worship. I recognize my colleague as well, I'm Pastor Gregory Beasley, good to have you. And um, let's get used to seeing him because I believe we'll be seeing much more of him. God bless you and God bless us all as we worship together. We will have the ringing of the bell and then we'll invite you to stand for the lighting of the candles, which will be done by our brother, Don Dyack. And then we call on our brother, Tom Brown, to lead us after that. everyone and uh, as pastor said thank you for being here you know it's so great to see this uh, this building being used again although we're taking baby step steps we're gonna make it we're gonna be here a full congregation and that's what the pastor is hoping you know we thank so many people uh, each and every week but there's one pe person that I, I really want to recognize you know leadership is not easy uh, being a leader has its ups and downs it's good and it's bads but God has blessed us God has blessed us with a great leader here in the First United Methodist Church. His love for all of us is, is amazing. His love for God is amazing. So thank you, Pastor Jefferson Niles. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, it, it's so different. It's so different to stand here it, it, because it's it's almost like you're a newscaster. You're standing here, and all of a sudden there, there's a countdown, and then they're pointing to you, and you're on. You know, lights, camera, and action. Uh, but as Pastor said, what a great job these these men do. Uh, technology is a great thing. Uh, and if, if it wasn't for the sponsorships of, of people uh, for the web ministry, uh, this wouldn't be a, a, a possible. So I'd like to thank those that that sponsored us this week. Uh, Pat Marino, in honor of Mark and Pat's 24th wedding anniversary on August 2nd. Hey, congratulations. Congratulations. Alisa and Paul Mandart, in memory of their brother-in-law, Eddie Fago. Thank you. Brett and Tracy Nolan family, in honor of Vivian Somerville and Tim Donovan. The Vosbury family, in celebration of Dexter Vosbury's birthday. Boy, you talk about a, a family that sponsors this web ministry. The Vosburys certainly do a great job, and we thank you so very, very much. Uh, Bill and Pauline Rasbeck, in honor of the second birthdays of their great-grandchildren, Peyton Everett and Nathan Savage. And also Paul, uh, Bill and Pauline Rasbeck, in memory of Pauline's recently deceased brother, Hugh Martin. Thank you, everyone, for doing this. Uh, the other day, my wife received a phone call. Uh, it was from Ann Kassler. Now, those of you who do not know Ann Kassler, her and her husband, Bob, were important members of this church. And she, she called Sue just to say how she's doing. Uh, they moved to Washington, the state of Washington, and she was diagnosed with cancer. Now she's uh, in uh, radiation therapy, and she has two more, two more therapies, and then they'll evaluate. So our love for her and our thoughts for her go out, and we wish her only the best with these evaluations. Uh, at this time, we'll do the responsive uh, readings. Uh, and I ask that you do the, the readings with me, if you would, please. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who in turn to him in their hearts. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground. The righteousness will lock down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. And now we'll have a video hymn, Trust and Obey.
reflect on a few things, if I may, please. You know, as I look out upon you, you know, you don't see faces, but we see these masks. The masks that represent what we're living through at this time. What a symbol it is. Uh, this pandemic or this coronavirus or COVID-19, whatever you want to call it. It's changed our society so much. And no one gets away with it. You know, I mean, it, it affects everyone. There are those that have lost family members. There are, there are who have lost friends. There are those that are in hospitals in critical condition. But that's the physical side of this thing. There's another side. What has changed our every daily lives. The routines that we go through. You know, uh, we're restricted. We've lost some freedoms. There's no doubt about it. There's stress. There's anxiety. There's a, f a fear of, of, of the unknown. When is this going to stop? Whoops. But the one thing that, that I have to say is this has not and this will not defeat us. We will persevere. We will be the winners. More than ever in our lives, we need to bring God into our lives. We need to pray. The power of prayer is amazing. For as Christians, our God is a great God. And there's a hymn that says, you know, that he's wonderful. So I pray that, that this will end and I know that we will be the winners. Let us pray. Loving God, as we face this present pandemic and experience fear and anxiety, may we hear your voice bringing calm to the storm of our time. Strengthen those who work to limit the spread of infection and those who seek to care for the sick and keep us mindful of those most vulnerable. May we shape our life living to protect one another and may our changing habits, practices, and sacrifice be for the greater love of our community and all your people. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Uh, at this time, let's join together for our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom glory forever. Amen. At this time, we'll do our, our offering, so let us pray. Gracious God, your love has been with your people since the world began. In gratitude, we bring these gifts to you now. Use them in us so that others may come to know of your great generosity and endless love. Amen.
very nice. Thank you very much, Tibet. Very, very nice. Uh, at this time, we're going to have our children's time, and uh, we do want to thank uh, Maddie Burdick. Uh, you know, she puts in a lot of time for this, and uh, she's very much a part of this uh, service. So at this time, let's hear from Maddie. Hi, guys. Hope you've had a great week. One of my favorite things about camp right now is that I get to volunteer my time to be there and to spend time with my friends and to be at camp. So my challenge for you guys this week is to volunteer your time somewhere. This could be anything. You could volunteer your time within your community or in your neighborhood. You could walk your neighbor's dog or maybe help someone mow their lawn. Um, volunteering your time is a great way though to show God's love to everyone. So I'm excited to hear about your volunteer activities this week. And I'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. Uh, thank you, Maddie. Uh, yesterday, a pastor asked me if I would just say a few words. Um, you know, I was a teacher for 33 years in the, in the uh, Fulton School District. Uh, I spent fifth grade many, many years, never got it past fifth grade. But I, I think I know a lot about, well, I know a little bit about the children and, and their progression in education. Uh, this is going to be uh, something that's going to be very difficult for children to face, this pandemic, because it's going to change their lives entirely. You know, school as it was, it's not going to be that way again. You know, like, like when we heard when we were growing up, you know, I hear from my older brother, well, we walked three miles to school and three miles back to home. You know, we, we, were, we were in a one schoolhouse, you know, and this thing. But this is entirely different. Uh, you know, I, I've been watching and, and listening to what different school districts are going to do. And I think they're coming up with plans. But what is, is really great, what I think, I've worked with the children here. I've, I've done a few of their children times. I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, the children that come to this church, to this congregation, are prepared for life. I, I look at them, and I'm amazed at their self-confidence, how well they handle things, to get up in front when it's children's time, and to participate in that. Some of them do their dances. you got to give credit to their families for bringing them up. You know, education is so important in this country. There was a past president who said, uh, well, he was asked, well, how come your country is so powerful and so strong? And he said, because we have educated people. So I, I just pray that, that this will be over soon. But I do know that there's going to be changes. But we're going to get through this. So thank you. Amen. Uh, at this time, if you could stand, uh, we'd like to do the scripture reading. Uh, it's from Matthew 14, 22. Through 33. Uh, if you would like to read along with me, that would be great. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Uh, at this time, we'll uh, have a special music by Emily Hall. Uh, I just want to say a little something. Uh, you know, last year we were looking for a choir director, and, and God blessed us. Uh, if you haven't been around Emily Hall, you don't know how much she loves music and how dedicated she is, and what a great, great leader she is. You know, she came to us, this 20-some-year-old, and she looked up in that uh, loft there, and, uh, and hey, I'm a choir member, so I can say this, you know, we're not 
spring chickens. A few of us got a little of this color hair and others are losing some hair. But she is so enthusiastic. She's like that ever ready, ever ready battery bunny. She keeps going on and on and on. And what a blessing it is to have her as our church member. So at this time, Emily Hall. Thank you very much, Emily, and thank you very much, dear brother Tom Brown, for leading us so well. A round of applause for our brother. Thank you so much, and as I say thanks to Tom, I'd like to say thanks to all who volunteer to be worship leaders from time to time, and it is good to see um, some additional faces today in person, and I trust that this trend will continue uh, and we'll have an increasing number of persons um, attending worship in person. We continue with our reflection for today, which is entitled, Keeping Your Eyes on Jesus. Keeping Your Eyes on Jesus. Let us pray. Lend power to my words, O God, for I ask of my hearers more than hearing. Let my voice prompt love and compassion, repentance and forgiveness, courage, obedience, and commitment. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I read a story about a teenager nearing his 16th birthday who went to his father, a minister, with a request. Dad, says the teen, I am nearly 16 and everyone else is getting a car for his 16th birthday. So I want one for mine. Son, says the father, I'll make a deal with you. There is one month until your birthday. If you fulfill three tasks for me until then, I will buy you the car of your choice. The teen, excited at the prospect of any car he chooses, agrees without hesitation. Very well, the old minister said, the first thing I want you to do is start attending services at least once a week. Fine, said the teen. The next thing I ask is that you study your Bible for 30 minutes a day, every day. Okay, his son smiled. The last thing I want you to do is to cut your hair. The young man stalled a bit, 
on the last request, but gave in without argument. The day finally came when the boy turned 16 and he walked, smiling up to his father, once again seated in his den, crafting a new sermon. Dad, he said, it's time to go get my car. The minister smiled at his son and said, one minute, my boy, there is something I'd like to say to you first. Okay, the teen said begrudgingly, wanting to hurry to the car lot as if the last car was up for sale. I'm very proud of you, son, the father says. I have to admit, when I ask those things of you, I expected none of them to happen. You've done well every week. I saw you at my sermon in the first pew. Yup, sure said, sure was, said the boy. And for the last month, you've been reading through the scriptures like a starving man looking for bread. Yes, that's right, his boy smiled. But you still aren't getting your car, the minister said with a shrug. You see, you still haven't cut your hair. The boy's eyes narrowed as he grinned out of one side of his mouth. You see, Dad, there's a reason for that, and it comes from the Bible. Really? How so? The minister asked, well, the teen started. I've been reading a lot lately about Jesus. He was the son of God and died on the cross to deliver us from sin, right? Yes, that's correct, the proud father said. And we should all strive to be like Jesus, shouldn't we? I would have to agree with that, no question, father said. Well, dad, Jesus had long hair. And if I should be more like him, I don't think it's right that you force me to cut my, my hair. He smiled, a triumphant smile, as he looked his father in the eyes. You make a good point, son. But you've missed something very important in the story, said the minister. And what is that? The teen asked. It is true the Lamb of God had long hair. But it is also true that Jesus walked everywhere he went. Jesus certainly walked a lot. He even walked on the water when a boat was not available, as today's gospel reading shows. The story of Jesus walking on the water follows the miracle we reflected on last week, the feeding of the multitude of the crowd with five loaves and two fish. Afterwards, Jesus sent his disciples ahead, as the text tells us, while he dismissed his, um, the crowd that had gathered, the crowd that he had just fed. And after spending some time in prayer, Jesus left that deserted place where he had gone initially by boat, the same boat in which his disciples were now traveling ahead of him, Jesus left that place on foot, walking on the water. You know, friends, I find this a fascinating story. And it is one of those stories in the New Testament that reminds us of Jesus' power over nature. It is a miracle story a nature miracle. It was a dark and stormy night, and the boat carrying the disciples was 
far from the land, the text tells us, and battered by the waves, for the wind was against the disciples. It is interesting to know that the ship is a symbol of the Christian church. And when we read the story, we learn from it that Jesus' disciples faced adversity. Adversity or trouble is no respecter of persons. Adversity can come to anyone, even to those who are friends and followers of Jesus. The disciples were having a difficult time that stormy night. Their boat was threatened. Their lives were in danger. My dear friends, life can become very stormy at times. There are all kinds of storms that can affect us that can impact our lives. Physical storms, like hurricanes, and this is the hurricane season. Financial storms, emotional storms, and the list can go on. And has, as has been alluded to, the COVID-19 pandemic through which we have been living over the last few months is a type of storm that has impacted all of us, that has affected so many things. These storms can come, up, come upon us suddenly and put our lives in an upheaval, can change so much in such a short time. And as we look at this story today, we see that Jesus' disciples felt afraid. Fear is a natural response to adversity or trouble. When we experience some kind of difficulty in our lives, it is natural to feel afraid. The disciples felt fear, alarm, panic, terror. Peter was frightened when he looked at the waves as they threatened to engulf him. The boat in which the disciples were traveling was being tossed and battered by the wind and waves. And when they saw this figure walking on the water, they were terrified, thinking that it was a ghost. So when we read this story, we read about that emotion that we've all felt at some point. Fear, terror. Speaking about storms at sea, in 1735, John and Charles Wesley, the founders of Methodism, uh, were on their way to America, and they were very enthusiastic about that trip at the idea of preaching the gospel to Native American people. And we are told that during the voyage, the ship was struck by a terrifying storm. John was afraid. He prayed with the English passengers. One of them and brought a baby to him to baptize in case they were all about to die. Shortly afterwards, he was at another service, according to the story, and this was with a group of Moravians, German Moravians, another group of Christians. When a huge wave engulfed the ship and water poured down into the cabins, 
When the English passengers saw what happened, they screamed in terror. But the Moravians continued singing, men, women, and children, seemingly untroubled. Later, John Wesley asked one of the Moravians if they hadn't been afraid. He replied that not even the women and children had been afraid. None of them were afraid to die, is what the German Moravian told John Wesley. And at that point, John knew that they had something that he didn't. An absolute trust in God, absolute confidence that God would take care of them. And John Wesley realized that he was lacking that absolute trust and confidence in God. The German Moravians were prepared to lose their lives because they knew that God was never going to let them go. John was deeply impressed. His time in America was not very successful in a number of ways. And he and Charles returned home after two years. But all the time, John was nagged by the thought that he did not have full faith. He did not have an absolute trust in God. But you know what, my friends? That was about to change. So the point is that even the Wesleys, John and Charles, whom we admire so much, experienced fear during a storm. But that experience marked a turning point in their lives and led to a deeper faith, a deeper confidence and trust in God. The last thing I'd like to say today, my friends, is this. Jesus called out Peter for his little faith. And the disciples on that occasion received a wonderful assurance. The miracle story of Jesus walking on the water illustrates that we can have absolute trust and confidence in God through Jesus Christ. This is something that we can draw from this story. And I want you to note, my friends, that Jesus came to his disciples walking on the troubled water. They were in trouble. The boat in which they were traveling was endangered. And Jesus came to them early in the morning, walking on the water. Friends, here we have a picture of Jesus coming to his disciples in the midst of the storm. We have a picture of Jesus who was in control of the situation. A Jesus that we can trust in times of trouble, in times of adversity. Peter requested that he be given the ability to walk to Jesus on the water. What a request. And you know what? Jesus granted him that request. He said, come. And Peter stepped out of the boat and began to walk towards Jesus. And this tells me, my friends, that if we trust Jesus, if we rely on Jesus, he can give us the capacity. He can give us the strength and the power to face 
the storms that threaten our lives. That Jesus can supply us with what we need in those moments. And you should note how well Peter was doing so long as he kept his eyes on Jesus. So long as he looked to Jesus. He was doing very well. He was making progress. But as soon as he took his eyes off Jesus, he began to go under. He began to sink. So let this story teach you, as I have allowed it to teach me, that once we keep our eyes on Jesus, no matter how much the storm may be raging around us, so long as we keep our focus on Jesus, he will take care of us. But when we take our eyes off Jesus, as so many are wont to do, when we allow ourselves to become distracted by what is going on around us, by all the noise and the chaos and the confusion, then we begin to lose heart. We begin to sink. Peter is like one who allowed himself to become distracted by what was going on around him instead of looking to Jesus. And I urge you, my sisters and brothers, not to make that mistake. There's a lot that's going on as our brother Tom did so well today to remind us of all that is going on. All that, that can cause us to be fearful, to be frightened, to panic, to be terrified. Keep your eyes on Jesus. The story also shows that Jesus is mighty to save. That Jesus can rescue us. He can deliver us from what is going on around us. He can stretch out his hand. And if we take hold of the hand of Jesus, we will be saved from trouble. So in conclusion, my friends, let this story remind us that faith in Jesus is the answer to all our fears. And we can have absolute trust in him to bring calm to our anxious souls if we listen to Jesus. If we invite Jesus to be with us, if we look to Jesus, he can bring peace to our troubled hearts and minds. So worship him, my friends. Worship him, bow down before him. Trust him, who is the son of God. Because God and God alone, as Japheth played earlier, created all these things we call our own. From the mighty to the small, the glory in them all is God's and God alone. God is in control, my friends. No one else is. Let everything that lives reserve its truest praise for God and God alone. Amen. Let us listen to some music as we prepare for our final prayers. Turn your eyes on Jesus as we turn our eyes on Jesus as we come to the throne of God in prayer. As always, we've received some prayer requests. Someone is still saying, think snow, lots of snow, but 
We will leave that for later in the year. Right now, we agree with Dave Washbury. Thank the Lord for this beautiful sunny day. Persons are extending congratulations to Japheth on his graduation and enjoying his um, piano playing. We have um, prayers for our law enforcement officers, all other frontline responders, the truck drivers who still deliver the goods needed during this time of unrest and COVID. Liz um, Anderson Race requesting prayer for her friend John, recently diagnosed with cancer. Noreen Butterfield requesting prayers for her grandson. He lost a friend in a car accident on Saturday. Two other young men in the hospital not doing very well. Prayer for all their family and friends. And Erin Trowbridge Vosbury and David Vosbury requesting prayers for Dexter and Joanne Vosbury. Joanne is in the hospital. Both are struggling with ongoing health problems. So we remember these as we turn to God in prayer. We give thanks, O oh gracious God, for the support and generosity of our web sponsors, Pat and Mark Marino, Alisa and Paul Mandat, Brett and Tracy Noel and family, the Vosbury family, Bill and Pauline Rasbeck. We pray that they will continue to prosper, that you will refresh them with your spirit, hold them up with your mighty right hand. We pray for our celebrants, Pat and Mark on their 24th wedding anniversary, that their love for each other will grow and deepen and that they will have peace and joy at home for Dexter, Vosbury, Peyton, Everett, and Nathan Savage on their birthday, that they will have length of days, good health, and realize their full potential. We bring to mind those who have died, Vivian Somerville, Tim Donovan, and Hugh Martin, we give thanks for your grace and mercy that followed them in their lifetime and the joy their lives brought to others. We pray for the sick, Pat Monji, Evelyn Gibson, William Ron, Josh and Elijah recovering after an accident, Mary Gardner, Mary Castor, Tom Anderson, Ann Kassler, Debbie Bernard, and others, Lord, whose names we have already mentioned or whose names we carry in our hearts. We pray for them all, that they will be restored to health, that their wounds will be healed, we give thanks that in Christ you have taken up our pain and borne our suffering and that by his stripes we are healed. We pray today for all students, faculty, administrators, that they will be safe. They will make progress as schools and colleges reopen in whatever manner is decided. We pray that it will be in the best interest of all involved. We pray for those in authority that they will seek your wisdom and guidance as they lead and will do nothing out of selfish ambition but will seek justice and prosperity for all. Grant, Lord, your presence and protection to all experiencing any kind of trouble 
any kind of distress for those who are in the midst of the storm at this time whatever those storms might be save them we pray grant them your deliverance and be their refuge and their strength in every time of trouble we give you thanks O oh lord for our time spent in worship and pray now that you will continue to be our guide our protector our shield and our defender this day and always in the name of your son jesus christ we pray amen